Yes, Gawa. <laughs> The Technical Training Department of Yaskawa America Incorporated presents Adding and Configuring Yaskawa Drives in a DeviceNet Network. DeviceNet is one of the most commonly used device-level networks for industrial automation, especially in the United States. Yaskawa supports DeviceNet protocols in full, making our drives and automation components completely compatible and easy to add to a DeviceNet network. DeviceNet is an open protocol that falls under the Open Devices Vendors Association, or ODVA. This means that its networking specifications are open to any and all manufacturers who wish to create DeviceNet-compatible products. Yaskawa products, including drives, servos, and motion control devices, serve as slaves on the DeviceNet network. Devices on a device net network communicate back and forth with a network master, which is usually a PLC or an industrial computer. Yaskawa doesn't sell devices that could serve as a network master, and we aren't able to support every possible network problem. Our technical support professionals are very willing to assist in applying a Yaskawa drive and its communication option board to a device net network. An SIN3 option card is required when adding an A1000 drive to a DeviceNet network. The V1000 and V1004X drives require an SIN3V option card. The option card plugs into the CN5A connector on the A1000 drive and the CN5 connector for the V1000 and V1004X. The option card kit contains the device net interface board and ground wires that should be attached to the earth ground terminal of the drive. There are a few steps that need to be addressed before connecting the drive to the device net network. We recommend putting the drive through its standard setup procedure before connecting it to a network, which should include a test run initiated using the drive keypad. A successful startup means the drive is functioning properly, and any downstream operation issues can be traced to the network rather than to the functioning of the drive itself. The drive must also be programmed to accept run commands and speed commands through the optional device net board. Set parameters B101 and B102 to the parameter option board. Once the drive has been properly configured, it's time to connect the network. A proper device net cable is important for good operation. Most wire vendors, including Belden and CNM, offer a quality device net solution. Device net cable comes in different configurations, but always has two twisted pairs. The red and black pair are for the 24 volt DC power supplied by the network. The second twisted pair are the communications connections. CAN low is the blue wire and CAN high is the white wire. A terminating resistor will need to be attached between the CAN low and the CAN high terminals if the drive is at either end of the device net trunk line. Specifications for this resistor are referenced in the Yaskawa device net manuals. It is also important to add the shield drain connection which must be connected to the middle terminal of the device net connector. It is always wise to check the polarity of the power supply wiring and to measure the DC voltage at the option card terminals. It must be at least 11 volts DC and the same voltage should be found everywhere on the network. Grounding of a device net network is very important and needs to conform to one very important rule. Ground the network at only one point. As the diagram shows, the network shield should be attached to the device net connector of the option card. The option card's blue ground wire is then connected to the drive ground. On the SIN3 board, connect the device net shield to the middle terminal of the connector. The drives themselves should be grounded to the single ground point of the network, 
which is usually attached to the ground or negative voltage terminal of the network power supply. After the network wiring is complete, it's time to set the option card's unique device ID and communication parameters. The communication speed, or the baud rate, should match the setting of the network. A baud rate detection capability is built into the A1000 and V1000 drives so they can automatically set themselves to the existing network baud rate if this parameter isn't set to a specific value. The baud rate can be set by parameter F651, and the MAC ID is set by parameter F650. Cycling the power to the drive is essential after making a change to the MAC ID or baud rate. If the power is not cycled, the change will not take effect and the drive will not be able to properly communicate with the network. Now that the drive is connected to the network, we will need to configure the drive's option card and network to work together properly. To do this, we will need a configuration tool. A configuration tool is a software program run on a computer connected to the network and that can be used to program the devices on the network. Configuration tools are available from a variety of software vendors, including Rockwell and Omron. Since RS Networks from Rockwell Automation is the most common configuration tool, especially in the United States, we will use it in the examples that follow. In this example, we'll configure the drive and network using electronic data sheets, otherwise known as EDS files. An EDS file is merely a text file that contains all the appropriate information about a device. Any EDS file can be opened and modified with Microsoft Notepad, WordPad, or any other standard text editor. An EDS file for a device contains all of its operating data. The firmware of the drive's option card has some limited data, including vendor ID, product code, firmware revision, or device type. The network may be able to identify a device from its firmware data, but an EDS file allows a network to fully identify a device and access its functions. All Yaskawa EDS files are downloadable from the Yaskawa website. They can also be found on the website of the Open Device Vendors Association at odva.org. The files are normally in a zip file and will need to be unzipped to a hard drive before your configuration software can access them. It won't harm the system to install the EDS files for all sizes of a device. The configuration tool will only use the EDS file appropriate for the device you have connected to the network. For example, there are over 200 different EDS files in a single zip file for the A1000. It is important to have the correct EDS file for the drive you are networking and the correct file for the size of the drive you are implementing. The Yaskawa format for naming EDS file names includes part of the drive model number, the part number of the option card, and the EDS file revision number. The zip files containing the EDS files will conform to the same nomenclature except the individual drive model numbers will be dropped since the zip file contains multiple EDS files. By using a more descriptive file name and including the revision information in comment form in the file, it will be easier to match an EDS file to an option board. The EDS file will begin with a complete rundown of all the pertinent information regarding the drive and option card. Once we have the correct EDS file, we can use the software to configure the network with our new drive. Before we begin, be sure the drive is connected and powered up. Begin by browsing the network until you find the new device. It should be indicated in the network tree as an unrecognized device. The software will indicate this by displaying a question mark icon. Right-click on the new device, which should bring up a drop-down menu. From that menu, choose Registered Device. Next, you should see the software's EDS wizard. In the Wizards dialog box, 
choose the proper EDS file for the device you wish to add. If you choose the wrong file, the next software screen will indicate the incorrect choice with a red X. Choosing the right file displays a green checkmark. Once you have the correct file, complete the wizard screens to copy the EDS file to the Configuration Programs database. The network tree should now have replaced the unrecognized device icon and question marks with an icon and name specific to the new drive. Right-click on the icon and choose Properties from the drop-down menu to check that the device is properly configured or to change the configuration settings. Every DeviceNet network includes a scanner module, which stores the parameters for the network. Now that our new device is configured for the network, we can configure the scanner module to recognize and utilize all the specific parameters of the new device. To understand the way information in DeviceNet is arranged, it's important to understand objects and assemblies. Each object is comprised of a class, instance, and attribute. Here's an example of how it works. Say, for example, we wanted to find a person in a small town in Brazil. Using this system, we would search under the object called Brazilians. The class would be Brazil, the instance would be the small town, and the attribute would be the specific person we're looking for. An assembly is a group of various attributes from different objects. For our example, the assembly could be people in South America. In practical device net terms, an assembly is a group of related objects that are pre-specified to the scanner, allowing it to easily poll the device for the necessary information without having to spell out the class, instance, and attribute of each piece of information. Assemblies come in two types. Output assemblies, or poll-consuming assemblies are information sent from the scanner to the device. There are also input assemblies, or poll-producing assemblies, that are sent from the device to the scanner. Only one input assembly and one output assembly can be programmed at any one time. The default assemblies used for Yaskawa drives are assemblies 71 and 21. Assembly 71 is an input assembly and commonly contains information like the drive fault indication and output frequency. Assembly 21 is an output assembly and often contains the run input and speed command. Once an input and output assembly are chosen, the scanner will regularly poll the drive by sending out the information in the output assembly and receiving information back through the input assembly. The assemblies found in the SIN3 for the A1000 and the SIN3V for the V1000 and V1004X are the same. Now that the input and output assemblies have been specified, use the configuration software to set up the network scanner. First, double-click on the scanner icon on the network to bring up its properties window. Next, select Scan List. The scan list is the list of devices on the network which will communicate with the scanner module. The scan list specifies which device to scan, how often to scan each device, and the size of the I.O. data. In the left pane of the window is a list of devices on the network that can be added to the scan list. Select the Yaskawa drive that we are configuring, and then click the Move Right Arrow button. This will add our drive to the scan list. Now that our drive is on the scan list, we will need to specify how the polling will take place by setting the format of the information sent back and forth. Click the Edit I.O. button to bring up the I.O. parameters window. Check only the polled box. Set the number of bytes that will be necessary for the chosen input and output assembly. 4 is a typical number, but some assemblies use 5, 6, or even 8 bytes. To determine the number of bytes necessary for your chosen assembly, check the Option Board manual. Set the poll rate to every scan and then click the OK button. 
Be sure to repeat all these procedures for all the Yaskawa drives on the network. Now that the drive assemblies have been set in the option card and the polling is configured, we need to tell the scanner what information is coming and where to put it so that the PLC can access it. This is called mapping. Auto mapping is enabled by default. We'll need the scanner's properties window, but this time we'll need to select the input tab to view how the drive's information is mapped. If the auto mapping is satisfactory, then nothing additional will need to be done at this point. Be sure you note how the information was mapped, so the same mapping can be used in the PLC. Otherwise, the bytes can be remapped in this tab if you choose to do so. The procedure for output is similar to the input process we've just seen. Select the Output tab, note how the information was mapped, or remap if needed. Before selecting the Apply or OK button, it may be wise to select the Summary tab. Review the information shown for the device or devices on the map, and make sure the information is correct. By selecting Apply or OK, the information will be downloaded to the scanner. By this point, both the scanner and the device have been set up to have the same assemblies configured. Information specified by the assemblies can now be freely sent back and forth between the master and the device. Information may be exchanged over the network in two ways, by the polled assembly technique we've just set up, and also in a form called an explicit message. Explicit messages can do almost anything you could do with a keypad, like changing a drive parameter, for example. Explicit messages are one-time communications between the master and the device. They will only happen once, unless they are specified again, and they won't be polled repeatedly. While all of Yaskawa's DeviceNet solutions support explicit messaging, the complexity of explicit messages means their configuration should only be done by experienced DeviceNet programmers. At this point, the drive in our DeviceNet network should be fully functional. If this isn't the case, use the following troubleshooting techniques to find out why. Before you begin, here's a word of warning. Troubleshooting electrical equipment should be done with personal safety in mind and should only be performed by qualified personnel. Begin your troubleshooting routine by checking all of your network connections. Include the wiring to the terminals, of course, and also be certain to check that any removable device net terminals are securely plugged in. It's also a good idea to make sure that none of the cabling is broken within the cabling insulation. A simple continuity check of each conductor is likely to uncover any wire breaks. Improper grounding of a device on the network could be the problem. Checking the grounding with an oscilloscope can sometimes catch a very noisy ground that is causing problems. Checking a ground with an oscilloscope can be difficult, however, and using a slow scope of 300 MHz or slower is unlikely to yield any useful information. As an alternative to checking the ground with a scope, try checking the following four conditions that might be the source of ground trouble. Make sure the drive is grounded to the cabinet with a star washer. Run copper from the drive directly to the single point ground of the network. If there are multiple cabinets or machine sections, it may be necessary to use a copper braid between the cabinets themselves. Check that the building's ground rod installation meets specifications and local code. In some cases where noise cannot be eliminated or a suitable ground cannot be made, it may be necessary to try some less common solutions. Allen Bradley offers a ferrite filter for use on the network that could clean up some of the noise and help to solve intermittent problems. Some troubleshooters have found that maintaining a continuous shield throughout the network or removing the shield connections from the device net terminals will remove some noise. Others have had success with removing the ground connection of the option board from the ground of the drive. Grounding isn't the only problem that may make troubleshooting necessary. 
An improper or old EDS file in the configuration tool can misconfigure the communications between the drive and the network and lead to a malfunction. Let's look at how it works with the RS Network software used in our previous examples. Begin by using the EDS Wizard tool to unregister the EDS file in a reverse of the same procedure that we followed to register it. The existing file must be changed, not simply overwritten. The process for doing this varies from one configuration tool to the next. When this process is complete, shut down the RS Networks program completely. Don't try a shortcut and simply take it offline. There is another program that sets the communications between the network and the PC using the configuration tool. A common one is RS Links from Alan Bradley. This program must be shut down as well. After both RS Links and RS Networks are shut down, start RS Links, then RS Networks. Finish the process by using the EDS wizard to register the correct EDS file. While you're looking at EDS files, make sure that the version of the EDS file you're using is correct for the particular option card being used. The configuration tool will catch any differences in the major revision of the file, but it may not detect minor revisions that can have an effect on network function. Make sure that the EDS file's name includes the correct part number of the option card and that the firmware revision number on the card matches the file revision number on the EDS file. If the problem can't be traced to grounding or an inconsistency in the EDS file, try a few other physical installation checks. Make sure that the option card is firmly seated in the drive option board port. You may want to reseat it just to be sure. Check to be sure that the ground connection from the DeviceNet option board is securely attached to one of the drive's ground terminals. Double check to see that the 24 volt DC and the communications wiring are attached to the correct terminals on the option board's connection terminal block. Also, check the polarity of the power connection. If the drive doesn't seem to run correctly when prompted by the master, the settings of the reference and run source parameters should be checked. If they are incorrect, the drive will ignore any commands to run from the master. Check the frequency reference command and the run command. Also, make sure the MAC ID and baud rate parameters have been set to the proper values for your network. If the parameters are not set correctly, the drive will not successfully accept commands or run at the intended speed. The specifications of DeviceNet call for very specific cabling, and incorrect cabling could be the source of a malfunction. Make sure that the cabling used throughout the network is ODVA certified. The ODVA also calls for very specific criteria for the 24 volt DC power supply, and there may be more than one power supply on the network. The voltage throughout the network power supply wires B- and D+, must not differ at any point on the line in excess of 10 volts DC. It is important that the single point ground rule be adhered to in order to prevent any ground loops. Another simple troubleshooting tip is to double check the input and output assemblies programmed into the option board in the network scanner. The assemblies must match or the drive won't run properly on the network. If the difficulty remains, go back and perform the network configuration steps we discussed earlier. The DeviceNet LEDs MS and NS are both a troubleshooting tool and a point of access to assess system functioning. Check the status of these LEDs, which are visible through the cover of the drive. The MS light indicates module status, the NS light is network status. Let's go through the various states to familiarize you with what they mean. When the MS light is off, the control module is not running. A solid green light means the module is running normally. A flashing green light indicates that the system is initializing, 
which can also mean that the system is reading the MAC ID. If the blinking continues for a considerable period of time, this could indicate that the baud rate is incorrect. A constant red MS light indicates a fatal error. If MS is flashing red, a non-fatal error occurred. If you see both the green and the red MS lights flashing, the device is in its self-test mode. The NS light indicates network status. When it's off, the system is offline. If the light shows green, it means online communications have been established. If it's green flashing, there's a problem in communications. The device may be online, but it has no connections in its current state. It may also be online, but has no open connections to other nodes on the network. If the NS light is red, there has been a communications error that disables device net communications. A flashing red light means that a communications timeout has occurred with the master. When the NS light is flashing both red and green, communication is faulted. This could be due to a network access error or because the device has received and accepted an identify communication fault request. If none of these troubleshooting steps have yielded a successful resolution to a network problem, the source of difficulty might be outside of the Yaskawa drive and its option card. If you'd like to further explore issues connected with the DeviceNet network, a good place to begin is the website of the Open Device Net Vendors Association, the ODVA. You'll find it at odva.org. Yaskawa always appreciates feedback from our customers. Please take time to fill out a very short survey about this e-learning module. Your opinions will help us to improve content and presentation for future Yaskawa e-learning modules. To open the web-based survey, click on either the picture of the survey or the Link to Survey button. Thank you for viewing this Yaskawa Electric e-learning module. We greatly appreciate you taking the time to learn more about our products and how to make the most of their many features. For further training or information, contact us by phone at 1-800-YASKAWA. Visit us at yaskawa.com or send us an email, training at yaskawa.com.